is going to be nourishing to my soul. So, oh, Marie, you are a living legend in the game. I don't even know where to begin. Um, this is Too Much Source 2020, an exhibition to celebrate Black British creatives who are making history today. And so I needed to get on the call with you, sis. You're just like a light. Even your background, I'm like, yeah, let me, let me oh, come through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the blank space that's needed for all of these ideas <laughs> just to come out. Um, so before we get into joy and resilience and everything in between, maybe let us know a little bit about who you are and what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm an editor. That's my main thing. I'm an editor at Penguin Random House. I work on a list called Square Peg and we publish like 10 to 12 books a year. It's all kind of like illustrated from like cookery and gifts to humour and all that jazz. So that's like my main bag. Um, and then on the side, I guess I do like freelance PR, freelance writing, um, all sorts. I'm like a bit of a jack of all trades when it comes to like creative stuff. Um, and yeah, I just like, I just like being involved with like creative, cultural and community projects. And it's something I've always been a part of since like, since literally since day. <laughs> I guess that's like... Yeah, I guess that's my bag, um, and that's what I do, so yeah. Oh, I've got a small story, you know, not anything mm -hmm. compared to yours, but when I was at uni, yeah, this guy came in from Penguin Books, and I went up to him, and because I, I wanted to be an editor, yeah, so I was like, oh, oh let, me just, let me just shoot my shot kind of thing, and I was like, bro, you need to give me two weeks' experience, and he was like, yeah, all right, then when do you want to start? I said, oh. oh, okay, now I need to do the backlog of work and think, mm -hmm. <laughs> do I even have two weeks free? No, I'm doing a dissertation. Oh. <laughs> then I went in but if I'd stuck at it basically I didn't have a, the um I didn't have the time to juggle two things so I'd mm -hmm. entered radio and done a competition and then landed that to be honest yeah. and I was like what but you absolutely have the dream job that for me growing up I was like I want to do that so yeah. just the world of being an editor I beg you break it down like what's it like it's struggle <laughs> it's literally i'm not kidding it's just never sleeping i'm like i'm like up at seven and then go bed like wow. at like 1 a.m 2 a.m and the rest of it is just it's a lot like it's wonderful because it's like you take an idea or you take like a person from like one little thing to like something huge yeah um and you can put it out in the world and you're like wow i've made something that's like gonna change this person's life and like this person's gonna hold on to that forever so it feels like really like rewarding yeah but it's a process i tell you like there's so many bits to making a book um, yeah. and to being an editor, but like, yeah, they, like it is, it is a good job. Like I, obviously I love it. I love books. I wouldn't be in it if I didn't, but yeah, um, yeah. I think I just, you, did, I did, you did the right thing by not taking on that work experience. <laughs> yeah. I know I got to the end of it and I, I really thought I was going to discover the next, you know, like, I don't know, whoever author and I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. I've, I've not found, I thought it was on me, you know, I was like, right. Am I not reading these, these suppositions that, <laughs> why have I not got anything to show at the end of the day? They were like, no, no, it's all right. But just going into Penguin and just seeing, you know what they had the best bit for me? At the end of the day, they show you the library bit. I'm, I, I haven't been there for years. Yeah. But like, they were like, yeah, take any book. Like these yeah. are, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. Like I did that. that. Yeah wow they still not so much like where i am now like okay. but when i did work experience because i did work experience at penguin in 2016 okay I, every day i left with 10 books i had nowhere to put them i yeah. just moved them i was like my it's shoulder funny. was like this <laughs> yeah. my whole bag was like please <laughs> i don't need this suitcase to be going people are like why have you got a suitcase well, don't worry about it don't worry about it's it right. <laughs> when no one's here <laughs> Um, and lockdown for you like I'd love to know your story in terms of not just work really but mm -hmm. the question I think in addition to joy and resilience is like what are you doing now that you weren't doing before or what mm -hmm. things have you learned along the way in the last couple of months you think oh my gosh I didn't like for me I've been living life at 100 miles per hour and when I stopped I was like oh this is what my house looks like at two o'clock in the afternoon I didn't mm -hmm. even I didn't even see inside of this room um so yeah anything that you're doing now that you weren't doing before God, that's a hard one. <laughs> it kind of, the weird thing is it kind of worked in reverse for me because um, basically my manager um, handed in her notice in January and then oh, left wow. my work at the end of March. Wow. Um, but because of all of the kind of like unexpected stuff around COVID, um, basically like when it was at the end of March, my manager left and I had to just kind of take on her work. And I had like other people supporting me kind of at a higher level. Yeah. But essentially it was like I was in charge of the imprint that I work for so essentially it's like I did a kind of u-turn like I was already working quite hard anyway and I've always had um like multiple jobs like all throughout like sixth form and uni I always had like 
two free jobs. And so even with my full-time work, I, I still had like clients and weirdly, I don't even know if it's like fate or intuition or what, but like in February, like the February before we went into lockdown, I just quit all of my freelance clients. So I was like, I need a break. I need this time. And then obviously I got thrown <laughs> into this. I was like, thank God I did quit. Otherwise yeah. I would not have, I would not have coped. Um, but yeah, it was like, it was that thing of like, um, I think what was more kind of something that I learned is that I'm quite a sociable person. So like when I went to work, I would go out every single day for like dinner with a friend or someone's like someone's house or whatever. Like I was always out. Yeah. And so to kind of being thrown like inwards, I had to be like, okay, like I'm spending time with myself or I'm spending time with the people I live with. And like, th that was, that was great. But like, it was a shock and I had to kind of like learn to adapt to that um, yeah. in a way. And also just, yeah, to be like, strong like I was put in a situation I don't like responsibility and I don't like I don't like anything like managing like I'm like I never want to be a manager I never want to be like responsible for anything and it was like my manager left and I was like I have no choice <laughs> do you know what I mean so I was kind of like hit with it um so yeah I think those are the sort of things that like kind of yeah yeah I came came to terms with during that oh, time yeah I just hear resilience 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 so we're gonna we're gonna really jump mm -hmm. into it I suppose um too much sauce this year so it, it's an exhibition and gallery and everything that you're just talking about in terms of missing out on live interaction and hugging mm -hmm. people up and seeing people oh I miss it miss it miss it so so much um and there's always the element of too much sauce where I just let people touch mic you know I'm like yeah whatever story you got to tell come come step up like we'll yeah. celebrate you um and so you're someone sis who yeah as I've been thinking of who to pull together to have conversations around mm -hmm. um your name will forever come up and make and you've made your mark on 2020 I think scary. Um, yeah just coming from a, a writer's background um your post obviously just absolutely flew 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 um so 2020 we've seen lockdown we've seen covid we've seen um yeah the black lives matter movement and then we get your post 10 steps to non-optical allyship mm -hmm. and everyone just went oh. <laughs> like everyone who i've just read in your comments and i want to read some comments and even if you cringe i'm sorry i'm sorry but i need to do this year because otherwise the extent only looks like oh swaj you're gassed you're gassed and i'm like no there were more people that were gassed by this so just some people saying like you're a phenomenal being Thank you for sharing. I think the number one ding, 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 ding comment, it has to be like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of comments around labor, like your labor is appreciated. Thank you for your work. Thank you very much for this. Someone's put this really sweet as well. So grateful for you writing this and sharing this. This is not the time that black people should be having to do this work and educate others. So much love to you. Um, I could go on and on and on, babes. Like there are so many lovely comments that came in and my heart, mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of us, were exhausted one but mm. two didn't have the language if you're mm. also walking with someone who's losing family to covid as mm. well as having tough conversations at work and so what we were able to do was like screenshot 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 <laughs> attach to email send yeah <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to take the time really before we get into the story, but just to say thank you, because I don't know if you ever really capture all of our thank yous in one, mm -hmm. but where you come from a writer's background, we could trust you and have mm -hmm. you. And when it, it was just that breath of fresh air. So that's what it was like on our end. What was mm -hmm. it like on your end? Because I'm sure it was very manic. <laughs> I was just stressed. I was so stressed. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, multiple times I was like do I just smash everything like electronic that I own do I just throw away I was like I was like I'm just gonna dash away my laptop and dash away my phone like <laughs> um I, yeah, kept, like, I was like arguments with myself but no like obviously it was nice to, to for like people to recognize it but it's funny I was, I was talking to my friend um Tia about this last week because she she was asking me about this and I'd said that what I found really funny um also is that a Kajaro mug Yes, because ah! oh, a little plug there, little plug if anyone Love wants that. to do the uh... <laughs> I knew, I was like, I know that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I was talking to my friend Tia um, about this and I said like, um, I bet, yeah, wait, hold on, I've, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, you wanted to smash all your tech. <laughs> that was it, okay, so yeah. <laughs> so I'd said to her like, the reason why I created that in the first place is because basically it was just like loads of people who I worked with who worked in my industry were like putting up posts that I felt were a bit empty or right. being like oh no what do we do this is so sad or like thank god it's not like that here thank god we don't have this problem in the UK and I was like 
is this not the same conversation we've been having for like yeah the dawn of time mm. and also like the same conversation that like me and my peers had been having in the industry for the past four years and I was like we're not listened to like we've been saying this stuff every like yeah. every year in relation to the workplace environment and now it's like you're seeing it on the global scale in terms of what it it, it kind of like becomes yeah um and so really it was weird because it was like it was essentially like to me a sort of like not pass ag but me a sort of like less sort of like confrontational way of being like here are all the things you do like do you know what I mean (laughs) so so for me for it to go outside of that world was a bit weird and then for Mm -hmm. it to kind of resonate outside of like the The who I would resonate with was a bit like strange but like I do think it I do like I'm grateful that people have received it and I'm grateful also for the things that like people have said in response to it I think the main thing with me is I'm just like I pray that people actually like really it. use it like yeah. really follow it um because people do and I think a lot of people act with integrity but at the same time I'm also like obviously a lot of it is performative and even even, even the responses to it can be performative and the sharing can be performative so yeah. it's like a constant battle I'm having with myself in terms of like I know it has made some impact. My friend Tia was like, the way you have to look at it is you have to say, yes, some of the, Im- the impacts might not be sincere and it might not be followed through, but there will be impact. And I was like, okay, that's a useful way of looking at it. Mm, Shout out to Tia, man. Yes, Tia. I you know, Tia's Tia. great. I love you, Tia. <laughs> She's going to watch and be like, oh, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> she makes a good point, though, in terms of you, you, it comes back around to this whole thing of, I don't want to say this, but I need to say this, or I don't want to sacrifice this over here. But if I don't do that, then my integrity is coming into conflict. And actually, even if I have two steps forward, it's better than no steps forward at all. Um, mm-hmm. I really, really, really hear what you're saying with that. Um, and, and, and also on a global scale, even just putting your name in, you know, and seeing all of the publications come in or people yeah. doing their own spin off. Um, do, you, do you find that, like, how did you how did you come up with the language? I know that you said that people in your workplace um, are talking about it and you wanted to distill the information, mm-hmm. but any tips for someone who's like, oh, this is how I feel, but I don't mm-hmm. have the words to communicate that. So mm-hmm. where do you start? Where do you begin? That is a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, in a way it's weird for me because like, I well, I've been writing for so long. So I started yeah. writing when I was like 18. So I, I had kind of, I guess say like honed, a craft in terms of yeah. like being succinct and being concise in what I wanted to achieve and what's really weird is that usually with writing it takes me like if I'm if I'm passionate about something I'll have the core ideas but then I have to work at it but it was literally like on that day I was like bam like it was just in my head and it was just coming yeah. out and it was really weird because I was just like I just have to get it out yeah. um, and at the time I was on the phone to um like my man because I was at the time I was still also like part-time working at BYP and I was on the phone Mm -hmm. to the CEO and I was like this is what I'm gonna write and this is what I'm gonna write and she was like yeah that sounds good yeah that sounds good yeah that sounds good and I was like okay you're like you're like my yardstick for knowing that it's right um but yeah it was it's 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 hard like I guess I guess in terms of any sort of writing I always think like okay who am I writing this to what do I want my writing to achieve and Mm -hmm. how do I go about writing it in a way that everyone will understand and it's accessible and yeah. it's yeah easily digestible I guess that's probably those thought presses those thought processes um kind of go through my mind and then it's almost like my brain works on automatic to just create that mm. um and I guess also with me like I have a lot of privilege in that like a lot of this language I know through like the uni- like through university through workplace through being like reading a lot of material so a lot of this is almost like kind of like second nature in the back of my head yeah. um and also I'd worked in like diversity and inclusion for like four years so I just learned so much language and learned yeah. so much about like words like like for instance some people just didn't know what the word ally was and I was like and, and like, I still have problems with the word ally but like the word ally was something that was almost like like repetition to me because I'd heard it so much for the past four or five years so it was almost just like yeah natural so it's sort of like I guess finding the different areas in which you want to kind of expand your language yeah um, whether that's books or podcasts or whatever and like just picking up and then disseminating that information in a way that's like applicable to your life and the people that you want to kind of target yeah these are great tips for it oh my god i could charge for this video you know you'd be like a (laughs) one-on-one 
Um, I have a question before we get into to joy and, and resilience. Mm. When I when I remember, I remember doing a workout. That's how I know I was in lockdown, you know, because me outside of lockdown, I'm not trying to do workouts. So I'm working out, working out, and I just thought, let me scroll the gram. I scroll the gram, mm. and I see that post that says, um, "Only click through, but be aware of sensitive content." So I was mm. like, "What's this sort of thing?" So I click through. I saw that the the um like a blurred image of the officer george floyd mm. and the car so i was yeah. like i know where this story goes like yeah, i don't even need it. yeah exactly mm. i don't need to watch this so i scroll past and people watching be like how can swazi scroll past? i was like mm. i don't i can't deal with trauma right here right now like no. i haven't prepared myself for that mm -mm. so i scrolled and all i did was scroll twice three four five, and it was the same and mm. i was thinking what is going on here so i've watched two seconds of George Floyd calling for his mum, shut down. I was done. Yeah, That's yeah, it. that was I, me. I, yeah, I, was, I can't watch videos like, <clears throat> like that from, from start to finish. Mm. I couldn't absorb all of the conversations that were so, social media became so loud. Um, and so in that moment, I just switched off. But what mm. I didn't expect, I kind of obviously heard I can't breathe and all, my mind went to all the other stories of, I, of, of black people saying I can't breathe. Um, but what I didn't expect was this surge of allyship. I did mm -hmm. I, like in workplaces and, and, and like you said, like mm -hmm. in place, if you're so familiar for it, it'd be lovely to know your experience of mm. if, if you're in that world, what was there a shift? Was there a change? But first of all, mm. did you expect that sort of, they're calling it this social awakening, but we've been woke from time, but for people mm. who are waking up now, mm. did you expect that to come from the conversations of George Floyd's murder? No, and no, and all, and, and I struggle with it because also like I, I think I saw like a Carla had put up a post I think on like the 29th of May or something, where he kind of was just like I'm basically saying he doesn't he he like he's not here to respond to every incident that happens, yeah. and yeah. I was like that is something that is really important. Like it, it's it's not to me it's kind of like unnatural for us to prepare ourselves to make a martyr of the last person to have been murdered like it's yeah. it's really kind of warped because then it's like using people as symbols when they're human beings like human. it's just very yeah. odd yeah. um but yeah for, I, I don't know like I guess for me I think it was the fact that um there had been kind of the talk around um Omar Arbery and then there'd been yeah. the talk around um around George Floyd and then also Brianna and then also the Christian Cooper Amy Cooper video yeah. where like so it was all of the, it was almost like it don't get me wrong this this has always been happening and it happens every day but it was like it was like an influx of it and it was every day like it it, I, it to me it was just more highly visible than it had ever been yeah um and and I was also seeing weird stuff like I was seeing stories about like like lynchings in the US and like yeah. the way they were responding to that. So I think everyone was like, "Raw, okay, there there's a lot going on. Like it's been going on, it's been going on every day, but but it was like shown to us all in a kind of much more stark way. And like obviously, I didn't I didn't watch it, but that video also going viral. I think people were also confronted with brutality up front, like. Yeah. Um, and I think it was probably, it was, it was like an amalgamation of all those things. And also the fact that like black people were more likely to die during the time okay. of like COVID. Um, and so there were all these kind of conversations that were happening that were all surrounding kind of like black lives and like how, how kind of um, not futile black lives are, but like how much more fragile our, our lives were um, yeah. and still are in, in so many different ways. Right. And I think it was at that point that people couldn't argue, people couldn't find excuses anymore. It wasn't a one-off. It wasn't like a, ah, oh, we can excuse it. It was like, it's, it's everywhere all the time, every day. Like you can't, no one can argue that anymore. Yeah. And so as a result, everyone had to wake up. There was no other option. Yeah, no, you've, Tish, you've got a gift with words, you know. You know, like, <laughs> I wouldn't be here till six o'clock in the evening being like, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. So just, like, we really, oh, I, I just really hope people watching this would be like, tell her we love her. So I'm telling you, we love you, we love you. We just, we just cannot say thank you enough for just, yeah, even your background to know you're, obviously in, in, in um, yeah, you've been writing. You've always been writing. That's your core, that's your heart. But then to lend your skills and the talents that you have 
for so many of us to use is mm -hmm. just like, yeah, you brought me joy. So let me ask you my first question. Um, joy and resilience. My first question it is actually resilience, but I'm going to go joy first. Mm -hmm. uh, where have you found your joy in big old wild, wild 2020? <laughs> um, do you know what? Just seeing like, it's going to sound really cheesy, but so many people I know have just achieved in 2020. And for me, like, I don't mind my wins, but like, I feel like when I get my wins, I'm like, rah, I worked hard for this. And now I'm just tired and happy to accept it. But like everybody else's wins, like my friends, my family, whatever, I'm like, that's so much more of a win. Like, I'm like, yes, you've got it. Yes, you're going to fly. So just seeing like my friends win, whether it's like jobs or like engagements or like babies, just like Aww. all of that. I'm like, that, that just fills me. Um, so that has brought me joy. Um, food has brought me joy. <laughs> like, <laughs> genuinely like throughout lockdown and also like also because like I feel like lockdown was so hard and so I kind of just like I was like I need to find my way of like dealing with this and all I was doing was like cooking and baking every day because I was like oh I'm nurturing myself and I'm like nourishing myself and I remember on like Easter Sunday me and my sister like fully made like a proper like Jamaican like afternoon lunch that we would have had at home but we weren't at home obviously yeah. so it's like we made fritters and we made punch and we made dumplings and all of this. And I was like, this, that, that to me was like absolute joy. Um, yeah. So probably that. Um, and just like, I guess like the knowledge that, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think things are going to change overnight, but also just that I am seeing an ounce of change. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh God, like somebody gets it finally. Or so, like somebody's changed their mind suddenly. Like yeah. people who I talked to before, who I'm telling you would be like, it's all in your head. You've got a chip on your shoulder. La la la. Mm. I had like rant like, and, and obviously it's not like, it's not like for me to always be the, the beacon people come to, but like, I had people literally message me and be like, you know what? Like this happened to me or that happened to me. And I actually suddenly realized, and I'm really sorry that I didn't recognize that earlier on. And I'm like, okay, we move progress. Yeah. And it's like, when you see little things like that, you're like, okay, we're getting there. So yeah. I guess all those things have like, brought me brought me a little bit of joy <laughs> oh let me bring you this story as well you've just reminded me and i won't we won't reveal names because it's all anonymous of Lara. Hey. but there was one person at work so after um probably a week after george floyd died and i'm in radio by the way so like we were yeah hmm, hmm. hmm. So let me um hmm. yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. so um <laughs> We're trying to find language for how best to have these conversations. And one um, person came to me and said, oh, do you want to share some experiences um, on, on radio? And I was like, well, that's a big reach. I don't know who's going to be listening at that point. And I can't guarantee that it will be received well, whether that's someone who's white or black, to be honest with you. I, I don't, it's my experience. Yeah. I said, it might be quite triggering. And he didn't quite know what triggering meant. And so he funny enough went away and came back with your post, you know, sis. He came back, I know, <laughs> I know. He came back and he said, I completely understand what you were talking about. I didn't quite understand when we were having that conversation, but reading through these points, I like yes absolutely get what you're saying i've changed like I've, I've i've not changed my mind but mm -hmm. i would know how to handle this better going forward mm -hmm. um and so like you are in rooms that you may never ever know your work has oh, reached you know and, and and on platforms that then reach more people so mm -hmm. um yeah if you have any of those stories maybe just one more would be so lovely because i think sometimes mm -hmm. as creators we think okay we've made this i put the instagram post up done do you know what i mean yeah, and yeah, yeah. sign it off and you're like <laughs> Yeah, but it's yeah. a continual thing. It, it has life and legs of its own and yours has, has gone and started running to different places. So yeah, any stories where you think, oh wow, my work has really reached ears and eyes and hearts to, to, to move change? Oh gosh, um, I think- <laughs> Good question. I mean, also I guess because I didn't, I didn't so much like react, I guess after that, I kind of like for that three, four weeks after, I'm gonna be honest, I kind of was like, I, d yeah. I don't even remember it like it was I was in a bit of a in a blur yeah um gosh I don't know I think I think the only thing I mean obviously now with with all that's going on I'm like oh is it is it really making much of a difference but like um some some women I think got in touch with me um to say that some like 
uh, reporter, I think it was, or something like some kind of person who was like associated with like the White House was discussing it. And that to me, I was like, oh, okay. And I was, <laughs> also, that was a bit like, well, they should really do their research on everything before they just go ahead and use like random <laughs> social media posts. But, um, but what, but I think in that situation, what I liked about it is that the woman was, the woman who was using it, um, was a black woman who had felt that she'd had a lot of conversations, but again, didn't have, didn't have that exact language or, or was finding it hard to kind of outline exactly what she wanted to say, because obviously mm -hmm. the space she was in meant that she was constantly confronted with like a hostile backlash or whatever. So she was kind of able to just like pass it over and to also use it as like, um, almost like a kind of like lever to open a conversation up and that was that then allowed her to bring forward the things that she'd wanted to say before so I think that was something I was like okay that is actually power like that is actually powerful powerful yeah whether it makes a difference I don't know because Donald Trump is out here <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and people are people are still voting for him and, people oh. love him and I'm like I am living in a simulation because yeah. <laughs> this ain't right but um yeah, yeah I cool. guess that was a sort of one moment where I was like oh wow that's actually powerful mm, yeah that is that is and it's lovely when people share those stories isn't it because mm. otherwise you may never know and obviously you can't know every story but when those ones come through um yeah that must be really just just joy 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 in the dms yeah. um let me move to resilience how have you been made stronger in 2020 and I think <laughs> like oh there's so much to say we could talk forever but I think these two attributes I said it in the bio for like joy and resilience. They're so key to the black mm -hmm. experience because we keep fighting, we keep going, we move. So yeah, the next question is how has 2020 made you stronger? Gosh, uh, <laughs> uh, do you know what? It's, it's, it's hard because it's like, I think, I don't know, like I do think it has made me stronger, um, but, <laughs> but I'm also of the opinion that like, trauma by default makes you more resilient because yeah, you have to wow. learn how to survive mm. um, which is kind of depressing um but yeah like I do I think I think just sort of like people rallying around ha has made me more resilient and more strong and to know that I don't always have to like carry everything on my shoulders or it's not always my responsibility um and I don't have to get everything right and I don't have to feel like I'm obliged to serve everybody and to do everything and to impress everyone I think that's something I've learned I'm still learning I'm not I'm not quite there but like that's that kind of thing has made me more resilient um mm. and I think just kind of like knowing that you can be hit with everything like don't get me wrong I've been fortunate enough that neither of my parents got COVID. I've been fortunate enough that I've not had COVID or any of my really close loved ones have mm -hmm. had that. Um, and I've been pretty much like job secure wise, everything like that. So I've had a lot of privilege in that respect to, to allow me to be this resilient and to allow me to be this strong this year. Um, but just sort of, yeah, just sort of going through this year that we have had and everything that has come all of our way um mm. and and just making it through and being like i've got to power and like power through and carry on i think that is that has ultimately made me i guess more resilient oh i love you you know like it's just it's such a i had your basically yeah this morning was a bit was a bit uh you could just see i've i've had to remove the mascara tears no. i saw everything on the um on the timeline with um the police officer who lost his life in Croydon um, and then obviously everything with Brianna Taylor that's happening at the same time and just yeah work it, and what you just said actually about being hit mm. sometimes you don't realize you're going you're going you're going mm. you're going until something happens and you're like oh I, I feel uh, unable to go like there's a, yeah. there's, a there's something in the way like and so yeah. yeah there's a blockage and mm. I was just on teams just broke like I was just like oh I'm not okay like th yeah. I'm really angry about this and I need to sound happy because I need to do radio in an hour and I'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> ah! yeah yeah but, you know but when you talk about being here and, and how do you is does writing help you um I don't like this word cope that's running around at the mm -hmm. moment because I think cope sounds as though it's not a coping mechanism but mm -hmm. writing um, do you can you just switch off and write for fun because it's so also your your superpower your superpower mm -hmm. to get words out but when you are able to how do you deal with just being like oh that one hit and I need mm -hmm. to get over this hurdle to keep going how do you deal with that 
I mean, <laughs> there's, like, there's like two options. One is healthy, one's really not healthy. So that the first is that I emotionally detach myself from everything. And I recognize not everyone has the power to do that. It's like a weird, weird superpower I have where I, I have to like, I can, it's weird that I can do it, but I can fully switch off. It's like a shutting down mechanism. Yeah. And it's like I almost go into autopilot. But it also means that like, I cannot know what occurred for like an entire week because I've just been running on autopilot, oh. autopilot. Mm. Um, which is the unhealthy way. Um, <laughs> but it is, it's a coping mechanism either way. Um, and then there's the other way, which I guess is writing. And I think like, I find it quite hard to write now, but I remember when I first started writing when I was like 18, it was sort of more like jovial pieces on like, tri like travel and lifestyle and all that jazz. And then when I started like writing when I was like 21, I was writing for like Lap the Brand and stuff. And I used it as like my way of like shouting, but like, mm, because shouting would just kind of like come back on me and then I'd feel like I'm shouting into the abyss with nobody listening. Yeah. I felt like writing out my argument and then like putting it out in the world was a more kind of like, it allowed me to like consider what I was thinking, mm. understand what I wanted to say and also like provide a solution. Cause I was like, I can say all this problem, but like if I, if I reach the end, I've not got a solution then I just feel a bit lost like I, and it's not up to me to come up with a solution but in my head I'm like I have to come up with something yeah. there has to be some grain or some nugget that I can offer yeah. that people will do or people will think about mm. so I think it was sort of from there and that is like I don't do it as much now but obviously the I guess the allyship thing was a was a thing where I was able to like because uh, I because I was I was angry but I was also a bit like I was angry, but not angry and upset because I was past the point of upset. And sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm past the point of upset, I was, I need, I need to put it into something because otherwise I don't know where it goes. Yeah, <laughs> so I, was like, I need to write it. So I just was like, <laughs> write it. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, those are the, those are the ways of doing it is put, put, I guess it's like a lot of people putting into a form that they are talented in or that they recognize like a photographer might put it into their photography or like mm -hmm. a poet might put it into their poetry. And like so many musicians came out with like beautiful music, but like, but it obviously stemmed from a very painful place, but that was the way they had to alleviate the pain and the trauma. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that's, that's yeah. the way of dealing with it. No, what you're talking about there is chefs in the kitchen cooking up sauce. That's where it comes from. Do you know yeah. what I mean? To celebrate people's talents and, and that is, you know, we need everyone in it. We need mm. the writers. We need those who make music. We need mm -hmm. the photographer. We need it all yeah. to just kind of uh, capture that 360 moment of, yeah, 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 we, we are in this together. And joy and resilience will always, for me, just be at the heart of it. So, mm. oh, sis, thank you so much for your time. Ah, oh, honestly, I, we need to do this in person when COVID stops uh, locking everything off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you. Whenever this goes out, I'll drop you the link. Um, but yeah, any, anything coming up that we should be, uh, keeping eyes peeled for anything you want to, want to post on a, this is, this is the thing. I usually don't shout out myself, but I'm actually like, I, yes! like, I think I'm actually kind of contractually obliged. Um, it's very long winded, but essentially, um, this is very long, but like when I grew up, I, I used to read these books from Dorling Kindersley. Um, and they were like children's books and there was one called like a life of mine that showed like kids all over the world and I was always like this is so amazing it showed like kids who lived in farms and kids who lived in like mountains and all sorts yeah. um and anyway like just sort of by chance and actually shout out Shani Mears um of the guest list who is oh, just yes! my like my hero like <laughs> a complete inspiration um because I was working in DNI and basically on this on the guest list there was like something that came out where someone at DK was looking for sensitivity readers or like people who worked in DNI. And I was like, me, I work in DNI. Um, and they were coming up with like diversity and inclusion guidelines within their company. So I like sensitivity read them, gave them advice, all that jazz. And then they invited me to be a contributor on a book last year. And then this year they were like, we're going to work on a new book um, called Timelines of Black History. And we'd love you to be a part of it. So essentially using like old content from things I'd written before and then like recreating bits and doing a full sensitivity read and forward and all that jazz I'm doing that book <laughs> which and both book, the book from last year and this book from this year come out on the same day this year it's a bit mad what? Um, no way it's really weird <laughs> but on the 1st of October um yeah timelines of black history is coming out and I will get you a copy as well I'll send you a copy I would love one. Oh, um, yeah 
it's 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 great i've managed to like flip in some of my faves so dave is in there crept and conan are in there lady lucia's in there <laughs> Um, not, not just always Nelson Mandela. There are more than us. There's more than Nelson. There's a lot of us. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that is going to be out in the world, and um, yeah, and oh, really congratulations! To celebrate it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we. That's you've good. got to find the book launch and all that good stuff. You know, we need to be this person. It's crazy. I will do. I will do. Yeah. I'll do a launch like 2021. <laughs> if we're allowed out but let's if we're allowed, <laughs> past 10 o'clock as well be like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know. <laughs> I hate a curfew <laughs> yeah. I hate it oh you, even what you just said yes we give thanks for the Nelson Mandela's and mm -hmm. all the people who've gone before us but yeah. what Black History Month always sometimes is is cheeky to do it it only looks at the past and there's exactly. people here today making moves just like yourself sis we want to celebrate creators making history today so thank you thank you thank you thank October you. the 1st is when all of this drops as well so we'll definitely be plugging Yay. stuff um <laughs> congratulations babes and we'll speak soon yeah thank you take care